Today's podcast is brought to you by Blue Canary. The bird has landed on beautiful Bainbridge Island, conveniently located at 499 Madison Avenue. ASE Master Technician Clint Ramsey brings over 15 years of experience, award-winning diagnostic skill, and a desire to reinvent the automotive repair experience. Schedule an appointment online at bluecanary.biz or call them today at 206 206- Four five one four two two zero. I got something for your mind, body, and soul. I got something for your mind, body, and soul. Good podcastville. You found the Bystander Podcast. I'd like to thank my sponsors of today's show: Sound Reaper Graphics, Tideland Magazine, and of course Blue Canary, who's been there forever. Today we're talking about the with the friends of Little Manzanita Bay. Today on the show we have Vicki Kirkman and Cheryl Kuhn. How are you ladies doing? We're great. Great, great to be with you. Doing thank great. you. Yes, That's great. Thanks so much. So you have a little, you have a nonprofit group that um, pr- kind of protects the bay at Little Manzanita, which is quite different than Manzanita Bay. And there's a couple that wants to put in a very extensive dock and have applied for permitting and they have a few approvals in the works. But you have a very strong counterpoint to why that dock shouldn't go in your community. I'd like to discuss that with you today. Um, who'd like to go first and tell me a little bit about the, about the Bay? Well, thanks. I guess that'll be me. So I'm Cheryl Kuhn and I'm the volunteer executive director, a uh, very fancy title, um, for, uh, friends of little man's Anita Bay. And we've, we're basically neighbors in the area. We're actually some non neighbors that are just on the Island and, mm-hmm. A whole bunch of people who are lucky enough to own waterfront houses on Little Manzanita Bay who really treasure this shallow, and I mean shallow, at low tide, it's mud. Um, mm-hmm. It's it's a quiet bay. It's a bay that attracts um, people who like to canoe and kayak and swim with their children or by themselves. Um, it's uh, not deep water and it's very still and calm. Plus exactly. it has beautiful views. It does. It has, it has it all. And then it has this magical creek. And I call it that because I have never gone back there in my kayak without something magical happening. Mm-hmm. One of my favorites was coming upon eight otters frolicking together and they stopped and stared at me and I stopped and (laughs) stared at them. Um, So it's, it's a great, it's a great place. um, If you Uh, are a person who likes that kind of thing. Yeah. Well, I definitely love otters and my son's school mascot was otters. Um, Then he went into Sakai with the fishing program and my dad was real big in trout unlimited and salmon spawning and clipping fins of raised fish and just educating people in general and making um, fish ladders in different creeks uh, in Kitsap County. So kind of familiar with a magical stream like that and otters. He always did say that otters were just swimming rats, but (laughs) that's because the cutest ones, cutest ones. But that was uh, because he had a dock. And they crap all over the dock and his boat. <laughs> yeah, and true. They clean it. 
Yes, yes. they they do. But I mean, I should also mention, you know, bald eagles, um, herons, eagles. kingfishers. Eagles. Right now we have those bufflehead duck, ducks that I just think are, are straight out of cartoon characters. <laughs> um, they're beautiful, though. Yeah, they're beautiful, beautiful. So lots and lots of wildlife to see around and the occasional here. Occasional seal. We also. Oh have yeah, there's seal. a there's a one I call Freckles who who is very curious and mm -hmm. quite unafraid. So yeah, I mean, I I don't see anywhere like this much mm -hmm. on on Bainbridge anymore. You know, it, it somehow by good fortune. And most of all, the fact that the bay is so shallow, everybody has lived by the tides on this on this bay. You know, everybody has understood tides in, tides out. That's when you get your boat out or when you don't mm -hmm. get your boat out. I or got you... the tide app. I know when to crab and when not to. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So I, I'm, I'm not a boater. I have to walk out with a wagon with my crab trap <laughs> low tide and then figure it out the next day. Oh, really old school. Uh, so, so we came together when uh, it's actually two neighbors um, who live next door to each other, um, who started applying for this permit way back in, uh, I guess, 2015, 2016. 2016. Sure. Well, hold and, on a sec. Let's get oh, get to Cheryl's backstory a little bit. Oh, that was Cheryl. I meant so, Vicky's backstory. You got it about her generational living there in that area. Please tell us about that. That's a fascinating oh. story. Okay. Well, in 1942, my grandparents had already been on the island down at Crystal Springs for 20 some years. But they had an opportunity to buy 62 acres of land um, and a home that some people may recognize as the Limburg House. Um, but it was actually Westinghouse and then my grandparents, the Millers. Westinghouse. <laughs> Westinghouse ball bearing, not Westinghouse appliance. And Lindbergh. And John and Barbara Lindbergh, Charles Lindbergh's son, John. Eric's parents. Eric's parents. Yeah, exactly. Um, I won't mention that I babysat him once <laughs> because, <laughs> because I didn't do a very good job of it. Okay, that's beside the point. Um, I'm not yeah. cutting that out. <laughs> no, <laughs> you're not going to cut that. Please cut that out. Um, anyway, so 1942, they bought that home and, and included 62 acres, including, I think, around 1,500 feet of waterfront. Goes all the way up into Little Manzanita Creek, all the way to where it meets the North Fork of the Little Manzanita Creek. Um, and it was... We moved into it. My mother and father and myself and my brother moved in in 1959 into that house. And this became our playground. This entire bay, we spent summers clamming and fishing uh, cutthroat trout that were off the dock um, wow. and up into the creek. And um, it was idyllic. And it's a beautiful bay, which has not fundamentally changed in my lifetime of 70 years. Um, there are a few more homes than there were when I was growing up, but the beauty, the tranquility, the lack of docks um, are all part of it. And um, I also, my husband and I in 2018 sold 13 acres to the Bayman Island Land Trust to preserve and protect Little Manzanita Creek, um, subsequently the bay. And so this is something that's near and dear to my heart. I'm also a board member of Friends of Little Manzanita Bay and became involved with that as this doc application came to our attention. And um, I, just, I just want people to appreciate this spectacular place that's a gift to the entire island and to the environment in general. So. And there's a little trail for beach access down there, correct? Um, there's a boat launch or something, a small one? That's Dock Street. Is that the Dock one Street. you're talking about? Yeah, Dock Street. About. Yes, that is the boat launch. And the people bring their kayaks down and launch them from there. And it's public and it's used a lot. Yes. It's very, very well uh, used. And there is also a road in 
on the south side as well. Right. That one's a little harder to find, uh, but it's there. So it's a very accessible bay and, and people make use of it. Yeah. And is uh, there parking by that boat launch? There, people park on, on dock on dock street. Shall yes. we say people yes. park? Yes. They find a way to park. They do. I don't. <laughs> that could be annoying, right? <laughs> well, if it were your house, yeah, maybe. I don't know, you know. But it's pretty parked up uh, during the summer. Yeah, that's why we got the inflatable kayak, so you can take it on your bike. Yeah, there, there you go. <laughs> and of course, so, there's a bus that runs there as well. So mm-hmm. I imagine that's true. You get there. A number, of, and of course, we have the bicyclists. I have seen people unload, you know, from their bicycles. But I, I guess I wanted to jump in. And Tell just, me about this huge intrusive dock that's on yeah. the dock. Yeah. So that's the main topic here, right? Oh, well, here yeah. we are, and you know, you just have to take one look at this to understand that a two hundred and forty foot, uh, I'm going to call it monster dock does not belong in a shallow bay like Little Manzanita Bay. It would not only be the first of its kind, but it would dominate the bay and partially cut it in half. Um, Is that because, can you describe it? Is it something that would float with the tide or is something really tall, like a, I don't know, um, like what's the ghost town on the opposite side by Bay Hay and Feed? Rockaway or something? Yeah. There's a huge, huge dock out there that goes out, and the guy casts for salmon off it. But those are really rough waters. It's a much different scenario. So is this going to be a floating dock they're proposing or a big, tall, industrial one? Well, I I don't think it would be fair to call it a big, tall, industrial one. Um, It has – the plan calls – for it to have boat lifts um, and a, a portion of it floats and a portion of it is fixed in place. And I understand a lot more about the environmental concerns than I probably am the best person to describe the engineering. If you want that part, I'll pull my husband off the phone and get him to come. No, no, no. Tell me, <laughs> would a boat lift be add to the width of the dock? That you would have to not only go down the length of the dock, you'd have to go around the boat yeah. lift? Yes, it sure would. For so, yeah, sure. that takes up a lot more space. Because and we're talking have- about um, a dock that's about two-thirds larger than the present dock that's there? Two-thirds longer, that's mm-hmm. right. Or is it... Okay. Well, the, the current dock is 84 feet. So and it's we're talking three times... Plus. Practically three times as long. Mm-hmm. Um, and it'll have the the... They can have two boat lifts... Uh, boats up to 50 feet in length. Although it's, it, you know, they have a private agreement with each other that they can each have a 50 foot boat. But if you, I'm not an engineer, but obviously they're not going to have boat lifts that would lift a 50 foot boat. So I believe the plan there is that if you had a boat that big, it's going to sit on the dock and the sub, and of course at low tide, sit on the on the bottom, you you can't lift a fifty foot boat <laughs> from an ordinary residential uh, boat lift, and mm-hmm. the specs for those boat lifts indicate they're more for twenty feet boats. So that part i i don't I don't claim to understand, but I can say that in their minds, judging by what they put in their application, they will have guests and other people who will come in boats that large. Mm-hmm. which is it's 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 beyond my ability to even imagine but what i'm thinking about is this we know there is a herring spawning area right where this dock would go and mm-hmm. we know that herring are vital to uh chinook salmon Absolutely. and we know that chinook salmon are vital to orcas mm-hmm. so there you know and all of this in here, in Little Manzanita Bay, has got that designation under the Endangered Species Act and other laws that it's the critical habitat for right. for Chinook salmon. And I just have to say, this is a bay that still has adult salmon 
that return and juvenile salmon that go up to freshwater Creek, right? Yes. Yes. I mean, how lucky are we that this is still true? Well, think of it this way too. There's, I think there's only two creeks on the Island that even have salmon returning to it. That's right. Little Manzanita Creek is one of those two. And there's a lot of effort to replenish natural salmon because the farm salmon ain't working. Millions of dollars we're putting into trying to restore those wild populations. And when you, I mean, you and don't. their habitat. And I mean, their, their habitat, habitat exactly. Is, because they can't they, do it. They can't that. do it. And, yeah. and when you think about it, what does a dock do? It shades the water. The boats churn up, you know, and their engines churn up the sediment. Um, you get light. You get noise. You get discharge. How in the world is that consistent with the commitment to restoring Chinook salmon? Yeah, moreover, the critical area ordinance, you know, it has to apply to the water as well and the Shoreline Management Act. I mean, how is this plan have pre-approval already? It doesn't. It doesn't. And that's why we're asking everybody listening to let the city know you're you're opposed. Um, you know, we're we're asking people to visit our website and and we will get them on our email to keep them apprised of what's up to date. Oh, yeah. Up there's going to be a hearing. And a yeah. hearing and there's going to be a hearing because this is not consistent with the shoreline management program. They have to get a variance to be able to do this. And that's where we, the community, have a real opportunity to say, this is not reasonable. Yeah. You're not asking for a hundred feet dock. You're asking for 240. And it's not very often in our lifetimes we have an opportunity to make a change um, to facilitate this little bay in the creek to stay in this and and make it better, hopefully make it better. Um, so the, the opportunity, future. yeah, for the future, for future generations to be able to enjoy this tranquil area and this restoring, which is something, a goal of ours to work with, you know, the land trust or or other people that want to get involved in trying to restore uh, an even greater run of the salmon, the coho. And so Vicki, let, let me ask you this. Um, with the Environmental Protection Act, the Salmon Act, the Land Trust, why is that not a hard stop before they even can put this to the Planning Commission? You know, in all honesty, I don't know why it's not a hard stop. Well, it's, so the Planning <laughs> Commission just taking application fees? No, no, it isn't. Go, it isn't going to go to the planning commission. I do want to say it. It goes to. It's now in front of the city's planning department. Mm -hmm. They make a recommendation to a hearings examiner, and there's a hearing held, and that's when a decision comes out. So we're trying to get the right decision from the city um, planning department. Yes, that. It just says no. Is that uh, hearing on the on the docket yet? Like, is it coming up? Is there a date set? There's no date set, but it could be any time now. It was originally set for April of 2020. And because of the pandemic, it got postponed. We really need to have a good turnout for that hearing and make sure people have either already let the city know by getting in touch with the planning department or come to the hearing, which they can do because we'll tell them as soon as we know. You know, Tim, there's just, there's one thing I got to say. Did you realize that even with this monster dock, the applicants won't get access to deep yes. water a hundred percent of the time? Yeah. It's crazy. It's too shallow of a bay. You can go out 300 yards. You know, you're still, yeah. You're still going to be on the sand. And they could That's have a, a buoy. They could have a buoy out there. One of them yeah, already does. Yeah, it already has a buoy. So that's how, when I was growing up here, we had our, if there was a boat, you a bigger boat, you had a buoy and you rowed out in, the, in your little dinghy to the bigger boat and then took off and did what you wanted to do or if you were going to go any great distance. But um, but 
about a year or two ago, I remember hearing something in the news about um, the limitation of buoys and liveaboards around mm -hmm. and on Bainbridge Island. Is that anything that um, you can use to limit the buoys out in, in the bay? I, I am not familiar with that. So I can I say this. The, tri the Suquamish tribe, from my understanding, you know, does not want even more, any more buoys than we already have. Um, the liveaboard issue, though, is, is, is really pretty separate because that's people dumping their waste into the water. But just having your boat on a buoy, that's still something you can apply for and, and, and get. Um, and one of these two uh, applicants has a buoy already. already. So Now, are these applicants married and have uh, adjoining plots? No, they're not. They're not married. They're just two homeowners that two separate, two separate families. homeowners, Those, two separate houses. Late last night, I was trying to look at the planning commission, and it seemed like the wife and the husband had separate plots in their in their individual names. Maybe that they've div divided their own plot into two, and mm -hmm. named one plot for one person and one for the other. Let me ask you this: as neighbors of these people that want to do it. What is your face-to-face -face conversations like, and how are you all getting along? I'll leave that for Vicky because <laughs> 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 Cheryl's got some profanity coming out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I won't. <clears throat> um, well, I don't physically live in the house that I next to either of them at this time. I'm on a separate piece of my property, so I'm not in constant contact with these folks. Um, I have had a conversation with one of the applicants uh, some time back when they moved into the, the house, um, which was cordial, um, respectful, um, brought up the 900 pound gorilla in the room, but um, uh, tried to just maintain you know, it, it is, after all, a neighborhood, and I think we all want the same things, except for the dog that they want. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that little sticking point. Um, so it's not a personal thing. It's it's an we're looking at it entirely from the environmental impact, the ecological impact, um, the fact that it would kind of cut the bay in half is a you know a concern, but we're really not looking at it. Uh, in a neighbor against neighbor. It's not that. It's We're trying to preserve the e ecological and environmental beauty that we have here for ourselves and for future generations, not not anything more than that. Yep, that's fair. You feel the same way, Cheryl? I, I do feel the same way. Of course, I wish this weren't happening. I'd really like to be putting my energy towards things that we can do, and we know there are things we can do to improve the health of the bay, and this is just dominant. Um, I, don't, I don't understand how they see this um, or how they are comfortable with the environmental loss that it would cause. So when they propose it to the community... I would think they're trying to propose this as a win-win situation. How is it in their mind a win for the community? Like, are you the did they say, "Hey, now with this more expansive dock, you have more room to park your boats"? And I'm doing everybody a favor. Is that mindset it, there at all? It's a private dock. Yeah, it's not for public uh, use. Yeah, it's yeah. It's yeah. a party dock, huh? <laughs> I mean, maybe you could say it's going to increase the value of their homes. I'm, so that I'm, might be the way it enhances the area, just the value of the homes. Well, their homes, um, mm -hmm. because huh. they'll be able to say, we have the first and only deep water dock in Little Manzanita Bay. Of course, and that is important because why? I think they got to answer that question. Yeah, yeah, if you build one, more will come. And that's, yeah, that's you know, the sad how you reality. To, how are you going to stop it? It'd be like trying to take uh, docks out of Port Madison Bay or, right. or Big Bay Manzanita or... Bay saying, well, there's too many. We need to, 
you know, this one, one is too many in this because particular bay. It starts the ball rolling. Um, and, and that, yeah, that, that definitely worries us. Um, I mean, from my point of view, when it's such a low tide and it's not a rocky beach area, anything like that, it's very driven with birds and aquatic life and quiet. And, you know, it's a heavy canoe kayak area, not a motorboat place right. like Hidden Cove or something like that, where everybody's got their sailboats out and such. Um, it is tough to think that you're just going to see like an asphalt strip, like a road in the middle of the water and it'll fluctuate up and down, you know, during the tides. And it's just going to, it's going to look like Sarah Palin's bridge to nowhere in a lot of places. Well, it's funny you would say that my, my husband calls it the, the dock to nowhere because uh, that's a great phrase. <laughs> because there will be this, you know, this shallow, um, low tide problem. I guess, you know, it, it's sad. I suppose I would say it has divided the neighborhood in that um, every single person who has written to the city about it, and that's over 50 households. I mean, they've gotten just, you know, hundreds of comments. So multiple people in a household, there hasn't been a single one in favor. It, Has there been feedback from the city at all about these um, comments sent in? Not yet. That's all wait, waiting for the hearing. It's waiting for the hearing, except that the city planner who was assigned to this um, sent extensive comments and questions, which are public um, to the applicants saying, and he came around and said it, you know, I, from what I know now, from what I see now, this is going to be denied. Um, you know, please give us all this additional information. Mm -hmm. That's never happened. We don't really know why. Um, we, we do know that, um, there, and this is also in the public record, um, the lawyers for the applicants charged that this senior planner had a conflict of interest. Which and, was what? Well, um, I, I'm not going to try and – I don't want to try and be the one to explain it because I don't no, – Just give me a general thing. Well, it, he conflicts because he lives on Shoreline or no, in Manzanita? No, he because, you know, in his private life, he's a member of some sort of land trust. And uh, so he he was removed from the uh, assignment to this project. So we, do Not, we know who's working on this now, or is it just going to? We do. Um, so that, that was Peter Best, and he was removed, but not because the city found he had a conflict. He was just mm -hmm. removed. And now it is Annie Hillier. And she's actually the person we're urging people to get in touch with. Um, uh, she uh, she's the person who needs to hear from people that they um, that they don't want this built. Okay. And At the end here, we'll we'll list some sites and where you can get documentation and who to write letters to and who to call. Thank you. Um, how do how specifically would this affect marine life and for how long? I mean, how long does it take to build a 240 foot dock? And then how long does it take to regain the marine life that may be lost because of it? And do we even regain it at that point? Vicki? I, I think we don't have the answer to that question. I mean, I fair enough. Right, they're driving pilings. Um, you know, yeah, how deep will they be driving the pilings? I don't have that information. I don't know if Cheryl does. That no. noise is that deafening. Noise is deaf too. Yes, it's deafening and it's so disturbing to all of the wildlife and the fish that are inhabit this bay. I can't imagine what that will do to them and how long it takes to recover. If you can fully recover. I don't know. Well, yeah. And it's going to impact it forever then. And if you, if you destroy a spawning ground yeah. for herring, um, 
How do you rebuild that? Yeah. How do you? I, I don't know. Maybe Herring just stopped coming to this bay. Yeah. You yeah. know, they are all, Herring is another thing that is in great danger of disappearing. And that's the other part of our problem with with bringing the orcas back and with restoring Chinook populations. And the coho and the cutthroat depend on that source. Of- and the birds and the orcas and the seals and the otters and... You it's know, all interconnected. You can't circle of life. Circle exactly. of life. Why yeah. bother breaching the Snake River dams, by the way, you know, which we're told causes decline in orcas. If you're going to take away their food source in in the few places where it still occurs naturally. It mm-hmm. Doesn't make sense. Gotta hey, think Jay Inslee, I know you're listening. Get on that Snake River Dam thing. (laughs) Yeah. So bring me up to speed how they were trying to use AmeriCorps, and then you guys decided that you would use AmeriCorps. Don't know. Weren't you going to encourage kids to join in with AmeriCorps to help uh, boost your cause? We are, but not through AmeriCorps. Um, Vicki, you want to talk about... Oh, Jason? Well, what, what we're, the outreach we're doing. The outreach, what we're doing is um, there is an environmental science teacher at Bainbridge High School. Um, and Better he, be. <laughs> yes, yes, I would hope so. An environmental club. And we have reached out to him and um, hoping to hear back, hopefully, I know there will be on spring break next week, so I'm hoping that Jason will get in touch with us to discuss um, presenting this issue to them, seeing if they want to get involved, um, how they might help us. And we, um, so we're looking forward to that. That's um, one of the things that would be encouraging to have the young people on the island who are, you know, our future, our generation. Mm-hmm. It's their future. It's their, and we won't be around. Yeah. And have them involved in this and see the importance in it. And um, so that's why we've we've reached out to them, and we're we're waiting anxiously for uh, for Jason to get in touch with us. And you guys are um, a nonprofit, correct? We are a nonprofit. That was one of the first things we did was make our justification to the IRS for why we should be a nonprofit. I mean, so far we haven't spent a lot, but we have hired a lawyer. Um, we're taking this seriously and we're mm-hmm. seriously fundraising to pay a lawyer um because we're facing considerable odds um here and and we need to be using everything we can so this is a this is probably the toughest question i have to ask you today if this doesn't work what are other things will your nonprofit focus on well i think we have other things there's salmon restoration things that we will try to do to mitigate the impact of this dock if it happens to be approved. Uh, I I think that'll be a focus for us in the future, uh, one way or the other, because it's important. And uh, as other issues come up and other projects that will help us um, restore habitat, all of that uh, will be our focus then. You know, there's a lot of research that shows that some of the structures we have um, close to our, you know, waterfront homes or that are relics of another time are are also not good for fish. And even though they're very small, if we can get rid of those. Um, and I think, you know, my feeling is if we're able to hold off the dock then it gives real impetus to people to say to themselves, hey, I don't really need that swim float, which is what, you know, my husband and I are prepared to say, we'll get it out of there. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, even though we legally have it, we'll get it out. Let's do everything, each of us, that we can. You know, walk the walk. Walk the walk. Right. Well, I think you have a tremendous heart, both of you, and a great um, idea what needs to be done in this situation. And I want to continue to support you in any way I can. Um, please let me play. Bleh, take two, Tim. Uh, <laughs> never good at tongue twisters. Please tell me your website to the people out there listening on podcastville and how they can get 
interested and involved. And if you have any work parties or anything like that, that you'd like to promote, um, I'll make sure I'll do my best to toot my horn about you. Well, no work parties yet. Um, I do want to say, if anyone was wondering, Little Manzanita Bay is on the northwest side of the island. It's the last bay before Agate Pass Bridge. If if people would just visit our website, friendsoflittlemanzanitabay.org, yeah. org. Uh, you can go to our, our current concerns page and you'll see everything that we are asking people to do, how to support this. This, this island, this community can turn this around. It is that important that you make your voice heard. You can make a difference for sure. Make yeah, a difference. Yeah. And we so appreciate you're giving us a platform to talk about this. It's invaluable. To, it's important. To- and uh, thank you, and no problem. i do it again in a heartbeat. Okay. Um, Vicki, you have any last things you'd like to say here? We also have the Instagram oh. at Friends of Little Man's Need Bay. Follow us on that. That's right. And We post, um, post videos and pictures of the bay and all its moods and its wildlife. Yeah, and there's some great video there to for people to see. And just encourage people to come out. I want to encourage people to come out if they're not familiar with Little Man's Need Bay. Go down to Dock Street or the end over here. Bayview on the, Boulevard. Ba- Bayview yeah. Boulevard, sorry. Um, called, I'm sorry, what was that? Bayview, Bayview Boulevard is the right. south end access. Road access. So that if you were going off 305, you'd head down Tolo, go into Olympic Terrace across uh, Miller Road, is it? Okay, yeah, and then go straight. I'm sorry. Then, I go Pura, then go to then you'd make off of Miller Road. You're going to make that right turn on Kura. Oh, okay. And if you follow Kura all the way to the end, you'll got, get to the is that the, the Williams Olson? Ted, yeah, Ted Olson. You'll get to the Ted Olson yeah. Park that's think, on Big Manzanita Bay. But if instead of going straight, you're on Kura, you take a right turn onto Olympic Terrace. Right. That's what's going to get you yeah. to Little Manzanita. And bit. instead of going at the stop sign, instead of going right, you go straight down the hill through yeah. the woods. There's some new development there. And then there's a park with a little um, park house there. You can access the yeah. bay from there, correct? That's right. Yeah. And I think Ted Olson, I think that's over. That's on the other side. Wing that's Point on area. Big, yeah. 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 That's on yeah, Big Manzanita yeah. Bay. Yeah. We we yeah. don't I just want to correct to make sure people get the direction straight. We don't have a little there's no little house that I'm aware of, but it what it is is off of Kura, you're going to take that right turn on Olympic Terrace, not go all the way to the end. If you want to get here, you'll take that right turn on Olympic oh. Terrace. Follow Olympic Terrace all the way until it pretty much runs into Bayview Boulevard and make that left turn. And almost immediately you come upon a pretty steep walk down Uh to the access. I was thinking about the earlier access. There's a Parks Department house with a little uh, orchard that's not really maintained that has a dock that has beach access that you can go down on it. And then go to where you're talking about by the lighthouse with the steep trail into Little Manzanilla Bay. Yeah, it's true. You can walk around. I mean, at low tide, like I say, just be sure you have a pair of boots and you don't mind leaving them behind in the mud because you're going to walk. <laughs> you're going to walk right out of them. That's that's that's. How don't that wear works. high heels either. <laughs> yeah, no heels. Leave the heels at home. So. Yeah. All right. Well, Vicki Kirkman and Cheryl Kuhn, I really appreciate your time today. Friends of littlemanzanitabay.org. Please go out there and support them. You've been listening to the Bystander Podcast. Make sure you support the show on Patreon, and I'll be looking forward to talking to you soon. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Tim. Appreciate yes. it. Yeah. <laughs> so do we. Thank you so yeah. much. Appreciate it. But say goodbye. Did we knock it out? We not. I it think out. so. And I if, think so. If you've got any ideas for us about what we should be doing, to, you know, let you us have know. a picket sign walking on the beach and take pictures of that person every day, just like the McMansions over here by St. 
Bethany. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, one of our board members has a really wonderful idea. We're going to have a, this is when the hearing is scheduled. We're going to have a flotilla of kayaks <laughs> and canoes and stand up paddle boards and uh, with, with signs. And that neighbor you mentioned with the lighthouse, mm -hmm. he's going to put up a 25 foot wrap around outdoor sign um, banner. on his property, yeah. a banner. Yeah. That's right. Yep. Um, that'll say something like, save the bay, yeah. stop, stop the, the dock. dock. Yeah. I like it. So, I like it. Well, make sure you get that at Sound Reaper Graphics. Yep. We, <laughs> actually, exactly. that is where we're yep. going to get it. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Tell yeah. Joe that and Mary that Tim sent you, okay? Okay. We'll, we'll do. We'll do. And, Thanks, uh, I'm going to go look for an orca or salmon suit to be your mascot. Oh, fabulous. <laughs> Lovely. We signed you up already. <laughs> Wonderful. Appreciate your time. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Thank namaste. You